evening everybody boy it was an awesome day today it was hot it wasn't as sticky but it was an awesome day today and I just thank the Lord for it I wanted to kind of go over a few things um, to possibly go over a little bit of what you know we I shared with you this morning but most of all I wanted to discuss something with you today um, something about God's amazing grace something that we can't take for granted that we should never take for granted I posted Ephesians 3 verses 1 through 7 on here and I also posted two uh, daily devotionals one from yesterday and today from Pastor Joe and I invite you to really listen to them carefully and read these read these passages it really speaks volumes as to what God's given us that we should never take for granted it's you know Paul himself said that Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I'm chief and if you read in this I mean I love in the first verse here for this cause I Paul the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles you know that that says a vo so much there he, he didn't consider himself a prisoner of Rome when he wrote this. He was in prison in Rome. He didn't consider himself a prisoner of Rome. He considered himself a prison for Christ. You know, a prisoner for the sake of Christ. That just amazes me. And he talks about how in this, that because of God's amazing love and his amazing grace, those of us that have accepted him as our Savior, we're partakers, we're participants in that grace. And just think about that. You ever hear of the song by John Newton, Amazing Grace? I, I would strongly suggest Googling it and listening to it. It's beautiful. I love the song. There's another song that I have here that I've heard recently. Uh, it's by a group. Um, I didn't get the name, but it's a beautiful song called Call It What It Is, Call It Grace. And when you hear this song, it's just so powerful. And I think of right now, as some of you know, <clears throat> yesterday morning, um, many of us learned that uh, Tim LaHaye went to be with the Lord. And I envy him right now where he's at. He's in a, the land that is fairer than day. He's, he's in the ultimate in the best place. That's the only way to describe it. And he's up there with the Apostle Paul and so many other great people of faith. People who placed their faith and trust in Christ to save them and allowed Christ to use them to be mighty, mighty warriors for him in the word. And somebody I heard um, I think Jerry Jenkins just describe his friend in such amazing ways but also two things about it, Tim that stuck out to me about his character as a, as a follower of Christ was he always took time to speak to people where whatever book signing he was at to pray for somebody from a part-time bookstore clerk to a news anchor man that that really got me but somebody had said, I think the only thing that, that was kind of sad about the situation was that he didn't get to experience being raptured, but he will. You know, he'll, he'll be the dead that rise in Christ first, you know. And I just had to share that with you today. I had to share that on, on my heart and share this because the gospel is made available for everyone. And, you know, we're living in a situation right now, we're living in a time where there's not a lot of respect for the gospel. Not a lot at all. And it's interesting, I, I learned from, was reading uh, something by this uh, really, really wonderful uh, fellow believer uh, named T.C. Stallings. And if, in case you're not, you're wondering, uh, T.C. Stallings is an actor. He's really neat. 
and he said something today that really, really hit home, and I've got to share this with you. Um, he was in the movie War Room, and he's, he's been in a couple of other movies. Uh, he said something today uh, that I had to share with you, and I'm going to read here. It's from Facebook, and I hope TC doesn't mind. He was talking about the election. He says, finally, as it pertains to this election and who leads this nation, we can learn a lot from Scripture and true. He says, I do not know how God will handle our nation, but if we read passages such as 1 Samuel chapter 8, and I urge you guys to take a moment to read that too. He says, we get an example of how God dealt with a nation that thought it knew what it wanted. And you see in 1 Samuel chapter 8, Israel wanted a king like everybody else around them, like all the other nations, and they rejected God <clears throat> as a result of it. God warned them that, you know, having a king was going to be bad, but they ignored God's plan. They pushed for the king they wanted anyway. So God said, okay, I warned you against it. So you asked for it. You got it. And <clears throat> he said, so God could very well decide to treat this nation the same way. If so, we need to continue to seek wisdom through prayer and scripture on how to function in a world that is rejecting him and are and are given the leader that they ask for, so to speak. And he, he says he will lead and guide us, and I agree. And you need to read Romans 1, verse 28. You see again what happens when people, when God just decides to let people learn the hard way, as he was saying. And he, he stresses the importance of how we need to pray not just appeal to our own common sense alone, but we need to pray vigorously. We can certainly find areas in which God is being disobeyed and the Bible is rejected in a lot of areas concerning this election, yes. That's obvious, but we don't know what God's going to do. You know, uh, Anne Graham Lotz said in Scripture that it says the heart of the king is in the Lord's hand. And we need to really pray for guidance. And we need to study the Scripture for ourselves. And when you read this, as I was reading this and I, and I heard this, I was thinking of something else. Many of you probably know, I'm a Trekkie. And in Star Trek Three, there's this scene where Lieutenant Uhura, or, or command, she was Commander Uhura, uh, she's sitting at this particular post with this young man who is itching for action. He's very impatient. And he asks her pretty much to the effect, why in the world are you here? This is the hind end of space, as he described it. And she says that peace and quiet appeals to her. And he says, not me. I want some action. I, you know, I understand that you, this is fine for you for someone whose career is winding down, and you should have seen the look she got on her face when he said this. And he goes on how he wants action, da 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 And her response was just point-blank awesome. She said, well, you know what they say, Lieutenant. Be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. And if you watch the movie, you'll see he gets it in more ways than one. But I think that's what's going on right now. I think Romans 1, verses 28 through 32, 26 through 32, is the reality of what we're having right now. And 1 Samuel chapter 8 is a totally awesome example as well in this area. And I believe right now that it's God's amazing grace, beyond his amazing grace right now, so far that we're not experiencing his judgment yet. But it's going to happen if we don't repent, if we don't seek God and start living for him the way we should, especially we as Christians. You know, he says to, you know, TC was saying too that we need to ask God for wisdom in this area. That's our first responsibility as Christians, and I totally agree. You know, we can't let anyone sway us. And he, he says, so I'm praying, Jesus, tell me what you want me to do in this election. How do I proceed in November? Please show me. Whether it be Republican, Democrat, or someone else, or should I even vote at all? Please give me clarity of God's will. Help me to obey your spirit's leading. My policy preferences alone can't matter most. 
Affiliation doesn't matter most. Speeches that move people don't matter most. But rather, it is your answer to our prayer seeking guidance that matter most. Lead me and lead all those who earnestly seek your guidance. Please help us to hear you clearly and obey you boldly in this situation. He wrote this about nine hours ago on Facebook. And it was really powerful. And I'm challenging, uh, challenging all of you here that are listening to this, that are watching this, that are seeing this post, and to read these passages, to really listen to this, especially we believers, to know that we are partakers of God's amazing grace because we've accepted Christ as our Savior and we need to act on it. We need to show it. We need to live it. And I believe one of the best ways is when we take our Christian principles to the voting booth this November. But we need to seek God's face. We need to seek his face now more than ever. And I urge all of you, don't take his grace for granted. Don't, don't take what he's done for you for granted. Share it with others. And I urge all of you that don't know Christ as your Savior, please come to know him today. Don't put it off. As I'm closing this post for tonight, I'm also going to post a link. I've posted it before. I'm going to keep doing it. And I invite you to click on it. And choose today. As you click on this link when you read it, choose to make Christ your Savior today. Because you don't want to be without him. Seriously, you just don't. It's it, Especially right now. But I'm also urging all of you, all of you who know Christ as your Savior, to not take what he's done for you for granted, to share it with others, to especially share it right now with everything that's going on today. Never take it for granted. Never take what he's done for you for granted, most of all. Share it. And last but not least, especially in this area with what I've just read, I want to challenge all of you. Somebody wrote something, and I wish I could find it. But I want to challenge all the Trump supporters and all the Ted Cruz supporters to knock off the garbage with the insults, the, the mudslinging, the whole nine yards. You know what I'm talking about. Knock it off. Ted Cruz stood where he stood on this, and, and you know what? I respect him. I respect his right to do what he did, uh, that, that he didn't have to endorse Donald Trump. As a matter of fact, uh, he basically kept his word because there was, no, there was no true Republican candidate. That's how he felt, and you know what? That's his right to, to, to believe that. But I'm urging all of you right now, don't take what God's given you for granted. Fight for it and share it with everyone that you can. And I'm urging all of you to, just as TC said, seek God's face when it comes to the, this coming election. Seek his face as to who you cast your vote for. Above all, choose to put God first. I've got to get going, but I wish you all a really wonderful evening. And remember, it's God's amazing grace. Bye.